we've got awareness of cancer and a bunch of different conditions which people are having quite a lot of attention on. But HIV is still something that's affecting the world and it's affecting it radically. Porn for PrEP is effectively porn stars getting involved with sexual health and using their fame to spread messages. So we're trying to raise awareness of things like what undetectable means, we're trying to raise awareness of PrEP and whether individuals, when they have knowledge of what it is, whether that's something that they want to choose to go with them. We collaborate with the different skills that porn stars have. Inside the medical community, the fact that we're porn actors means that sometimes we're viewed as slightly less professional uh, with our message. But so far, both sides have been very supportive and the fact that we sort of bring the two of them together is like a meeting point that so far has been quite weak. I mean, actually talking about sex as it happened, like as it really happens, rather than making it this sort of sterile concept, has been really helpful for getting the message out there about what people can do uh, to make themselves safer during sex. I started Point for Breath because my first scene, my, my first partner was HIV positive, and that sort of put me through a, a learning curve that I wasn't quite prepared for. Um, after that, I went on prep, and I sort of kept that a bit to myself. While I was dealing with that, a number of my friends became HIV positive, and I realised just how important it was to tell people about this. So I now dedicate a lot of my time as a prep advocate, which kind of alleviates a little bit of my conscience. Since I started porn, I learned a lot about HIV. All the background information I thought about HIV fell away, and I realised that um, you know things like it, it's not a it's not a disease that uh, is a death sentence for people anymore. It's ones that when people have a well-managed viral load, then they, become, they can become undetectable, and that's uninfectious. And the scientific community has been saying that for quite a while. Um, so that can sort of erode some of the fear and increase some respect and understanding there. I found as an HIV negative person that I was quite rare to have been someone who gave enough interest to learn the full, um, I, I guess, the full modern viewpoints around HIV and what modern people living with HIV are dealing with. We don't make a huge effort to say things like, you can't catch HIV from kissing. HIV is something that people can have a long lifespan with. So we really could do more to educate people in school, to, to dispel some of these. And it might have knock-on effects for things like HIV understanding, reducing homophobia, just making all of the issues a little bit more relatable and a little less scary. I would say that if you're afraid to get tested, the more you do it, uh, the more comfortable you get with it. And actually, it's, it's just so much better to do it than to not know what's going on. World AIDS Day is really important because it draws attention to an issue that at the moment is slightly out of vogue. I mean, we're, we've got awareness of cancer and a bunch of different conditions which people are having quite a lot of attention on. But HIV is still something that's affecting the world and it's affecting it radically. I mean, differently in different locations, but their issues are still going on. And it's important to, to be aware that we need to tackle it systemically together. It's a global problem and it needs a global solution. So we need consistently to be looking at this and seeing how we can be making progress.